Hi, and welcome back, everyone. In the last video, we looked at how we can use a single push button to control some hardware. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use multiple inputs. So specifically in this example here, we have two push buttons that are going to control things on our circuit board. So let's take a look at the hardware first. Notice that we have the five volts from the Arduino hooked to this positive rail here. We've got ground hooked to this negative rail here. So make sure you do the same five volts on this rail and ground hooked to this rail here. We've got a couple of push buttons here and they are connected with 10k ohm pull up resistors. So make sure you set up the circuit exactly as shown here. The input signal from this push butt circuit is going to come through this green wire in to pin 7 for this push button. And for this push button here, it's going to come through this green wire in to pin 12. We've got a number of output circuits. We've got a red LED circuit. We've got a green LED circuit. And we've got a blue LED circuit. So first thing, we are going to create a couple of variables. One's called PB1. We're going to set it equal to zero. Don't forget your semicolon. We've got another variable here called PB2, and that's equal to zero, followed by semicolon. PB1 is push button one. That's this one here. And PB2 is push button two. That's this one here. Void setup is going to come next. Void setup is where you create your inputs and outputs and you're telling the Arduino board that we want pin 2 to be output, pin 7 to be input, pin 8 to be output, pin 12 to be input, and pin 13 to be output. After that you're going to have your avoid loop. Don't forget your open curly brace here and your close curly brace down here. And inside the first thing we're going to do here in void loop is we're going to read whatever is the voltage coming in to pin 7. It's either going to be a low or a high and that's going to get stored in push button 1. Next we're going to read pin 12 and we're going to store that into push button 2. And then we are going to do some things based on the states of push button 1 and push button 2. If push button 1 is equal to 1, in other words if it's pushed, we are going to turn LED 2 off, which is the blue LED, and we're going to turn LED from pin 8, which is the green LED, we're going to turn it high. So if this push button gets pushed, this is going to turn on. It's going to turn on for 20 milliseconds, and then we're going to turn it back off. Next, we have an LCIF. If we have another condition that we want to check, and we do, we have another push button to check. We're going to do that with an else if. That's else space I F. And then our other condition. If PB2 is equal to 1, that's this push button here. If this is equal to 1, if it's high, we're going to turn off this LED. We're going to make sure it's off. That's pin 2 and we're going to turn on pin 13 which is this one right here. We're going to hold it there for 20 milliseconds and then we're going to turn off the red LED. So we have an if and we're checking a condition. We're checking push button 1 to see if it's high. We have an else if. We're checking to see if push button 2 is high. If those two conditions are not met, if we're not pushing any push buttons, it comes down here to else and it does a digital write to pin 2 and it sets it high. In other words, that's the blue LED. So if neither of these are pushed, this should be on. If I push this one, this turns off and this turns on. If I push this, this turns on and these should be off. So let's try it and see if it works. So let's start the simulator. And you can see that, yes, our blue LED does turn on. We're not pushing any of the push buttons. But if I push push button 1, 
you can see the green LED turns on, the blue turns off. If I let go, then the blue turns back on because this condition now is met and so it does this here. If I turn on and push push button 2, that turns on the red LED, turns off the blue LED. If I let go, then it goes back. The blue goes back on and the red's turned off. I press it again, the red LED turns on and the blue turns off. So that's how you can set up using multiple digital inputs. Notice here we use the if, else if, else in order to do this task. I highly suggest you try this in Tinkercad, make sure it works. Hopefully you are successful to get it to work. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.